While you don't see this logo on many phones in the United States, the company behind it has been around for 30 years. I've taken a look at some of Huawei's top shelf gadgets over the past few months, and the world just got two more. The Huawei P10 dual camera smartphone and Huawei Watch 2. I'm Mr. Mobile, and I've spent 24 hours with each in Barcelona. Let's take a quick look. A couple years ago, the original Huawei Watch was one of the prettiest Google-powered wearables, a glamorous, if girthy, Android adornment. The sequel I just got today is, well, it keeps the thick part, at least. The Huawei Watch 2 is one of a pair of watches announced at MWC. The other, the Watch 2 Classic, is a bit more fancy in metal, but still a chunk master. This one is obviously aimed more at fitness folks and outdoors people, with IP68 water and dust resistance, Gorilla Glass 3, and a heart rate sensor. Physically, I can't say I'm a fan. We've seen this look before, and on the wrist it kind of looks and feels like a drugstore Timex. If the bezel rotated, I could forgive that. As we learned in Android Central's review of the new LG watches, a spinning bezel or crown goes a long way. But as it stands, this is just a chunky, oddly unstylish piece, no matter what color you get it in. Then again, I'm the guy who actually likes the Casio Android watches, so I guess there's no accounting for taste. On the flip side, this is my first exposure to the new Android Wear, and I'm enjoying it. Once you get used to separate apps for watch and phone, and all the new swiping in the interface, it's a pretty cool platform. And the Watch 2 runs it super speedily on a Snapdragon 2100 chipset. There's also a speakerphone and microphone aboard, in case you want to make calls through your phone via Bluetooth, and NFC for Android Pay. I'm also eager to try out this mode, which disables all the smart features to save power so you can still tell the time even if you're low on battery. That's more exciting to me than the much ballyhooed porting of Google Assistant to the wrist, which at this point still seems like a rebrand of the Google Now functionality that was already there. But we'll see. Unlike the Watch 2, the Huawei P10 smartphone won't get a US release. You've seen plenty of Huawei's Mate phones on my channel, so think of the P10 as a smaller version of the Mate 9. I find it much more stylish than its larger counterparts, with a nail file-like texture on the backplate that Huawei calls Hyper Diamond Cut. It does a better job of hiding fingerprints than more conventional surfaces, and while it's definitely weird and kind of slippery, I quickly came to like it so much that now, the smooth skin of my Google Pixel feels somehow unfinished by comparison. Overall, the look of the P10 is quite striking in its many different color options, with nice little details strewn across the hardware. Don't expect any surprises on the software front, this is still EMUI, sitting atop Android 7, which is a feature-rich, but also cruft-heavy skin, and kind of ugly to boot. If you want, you can disable the software buttons and use the fingerprint scanner as a kind of touchpad. It's not really my speed, but again, it's nice to see a manufacturer thinking outside the box when it comes to the interface. The crown jewel of the P10 is the camera array. Up front, the selfie shooter is supposedly crafty enough to figure out how many people are in a shot and adjust the framing accordingly. Back aft, the 12 megapixel color and 20 megapixel monochrome sensors work together with Leica optics to bring a bunch of features we haven't seen before, and some we have. Huawei hosted a photography class here in Barcelona, so I got to test the P10's portrait capabilities on some of my colleagues. Keep in mind that these were taken in excellent lighting and under the tutelage of professional photographer Manfred Baumann, a master of the form. So I peppered in some shots I took over the rest of my 24 hours with the device too. Judge for yourself on this camera quality while I get ready to wrap things up. The P10 will have a larger sibling in the P10 Plus, which brings waterproofing along with a larger footprint, and the two will straddle the $700 line. Sadly, they won't launch in the States, so this may be the last you see of the P10 on the Mr. Mobile channel, but stay tuned for that Watch 2 review, and hopefully a Watch 2 Classic piece as well, early next month. And 
pay a visit to my MWC sponsor. Thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. Sign up at thrifter.com and get thoughtfully selected tech deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy daily without all the fluff. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.